Yep. I'm going to make out with my mic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. Uh. <laughs> Everybody, happy Thursday. I'm making out with my mic. Okay. Oh so my gosh. you guys should check out our deep dive this week because it was awesome. It was just me and Mock just having girl time. It's like old times. Girl time. It really was like old times, <laughs> right? It was just old times. When we were really small potatoes. It was just you and me shooting the crap, talking about childlessness is what we were doing. We were breaking That's it what down. We did. So you should check that now out. We're like medium potatoes. We are just we're like like the we're not even russet potatoes. You know what I mean? No. We're like we're, we're sort like of the, red potatoes. We're like the new skin red potatoes is yeah. what we are. Yeah. Right. That's what we are. Exactly. <laughs> we're not the small white ones. We're the new skin red ones is what That's we right. are right now. So you should check us out tomorrow. Um, it drops tomorrow because Valen's going to have that out. And then also, you guys, we have a new – this is going to be hard for me to say because it's early and I haven't had enough coffee – a <laughs> special short show um, with our new friends at Bulwark Capital. Zach from Bulwark Capital. God, I can't believe I got that out of my mouth correctly. That's a, that was good. That was good. They're also our new sponsor. Um, and we're talking all things money because everybody's concerned about their money. I know I am. And um, – our first show is going to air this Sunday um, on all of our regular channels. You need to check that out because it's it's about money and like what you should be doing with your money. And it's just just questions about money. We're going to be doing that. It's going to be a regular short show. So check that out. This Sunday, um, all of our regular channels do it. So and it's that. called Chicks Cha-Ching. Cha <laughs> I know. Isn't that clever? Isn't that clever? We thought of that all ourselves. <laughs> okay, so, that's that. exciting because you know what? We, this that's a perfect segue into another reminder, which is that there is no live stream tomorrow or Monday, but you're gonna get the deep dive tomorrow, and you're gonna get the new Chicks Cha Ching show on Sunday. So right. you're still gonna get plenty of chicks. It's just and not if, gonna be at our normal time. And if you're an insider or a locals um, peep, you're gonna get some probably some pictures of Mock in her bikini. This That's weekend. absolutely fake news because I don't wear bikinis. It's probably not <laughs> fake news. You know, you're probably going to get some pictures of her. And then you're also going to get me doing some cowgirl stuff probably. See? This weekend, you know, See? and next week. You never know. So just stay <laughs> tuned All right. Um, there is so much to get to even before we get to videos, you guys. So much. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So we've reminded people about the no show, no live stream uh, Friday, Monday. The Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday shows of next week are going to be at 8.15 Eastern uh, instead of 7.15, so just an hour later than normal. 8.15, Tuesday, Wednesday, in. Thursday. Sleep in, you guys, and then get boned like normal. Oh, uh, but plan, oh, on, <laughs> plan on joining us Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, oh, 8.15. Excited. Lots of like sort of follow-up headlines, things that we've talked about earlier in the week that there are now updates about. Remember earlier in the week, we were like, has anybody heard what's going on with John Fetterman? And then there was the picture of him like pr uh, pre-stroke and everybody was like, oh my God, it's a conspiracy. It's two different men. And there was like that whole mm -hmm. thing. Speaking right. of conspiracies, I, remind me to tell you about the other crazy one that I saw yesterday. Crazy. Um, but anyway, John Fetterman is planning a return to the Senate on April 17th. He is going to be undepressed on April 17th and better i guess I mean, and like so he's you're coming depressed back. and then you're undepressed is that right okay all right right so he's mm -hmm. coming back april 17th uh the vengeance day the trans day of vengeance that we mentioned um yesterday or the day before i can't remember now it is still happening which still is happening. unbelievable to me uh in you know in light of what happened in nashville that is still happening in dc on I think it's the first of April. Well, listen, um, if you watch if you watch any of the news channels other than Fox, there's this person, the trans thing is like they're blah blah blah, trans, nothing, blah, 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 blah. The trans God. stuff has nothing to do with this. Nothing to do with it. You know, she there is no targeting of a Christian no. school. There's it's all no, about the gun. All about the guns. All that's all the that's the only I mean, that's what it just picked right. itself up and like put it into it that person's hands. Right. There was no there was no, not even a person. It was just it was all about the, gun. <laughs> the guns just did them did right. all of this themselves. It's all about the guns. That's what we're supposed to believe. Right. That. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, that vengeance day is still happening. Mm -hmm. Um the yesterday we talked about the fact that Katie Hobbs's press secretary had posted that ridiculous photo, which just was more incitement essentially for trans people to take up arms against any 
transphobes, um, she resigned yesterday, which is a complete cop out. If you ask me, it, the right thing to have happened would have been for Katie Hobbs to have fired her on the spot. Right. But no, she allowed her to resign. And so and she should have made a statement. She's gone. Yeah, she should have fired her, made a statement, yeah. came out and said, yeah, exactly. But she, she's not going to do that. She's not going to do that. We'll see. <laughs> uh, another headline is that the Trump grand jury on this whole Stormy Daniels case, they are um, off for the next month. And they're saying it's because of a pre-scheduled hiatus. Mm. Does that right. sound, you think that's right? There's, they have no case. I mean, that's there's just, just no, there's no case there. Hiatus. He is so squirming. Brad I feel is. like there's some squirming going on. He's like, oh crap, what am I going to do? <laughs> oh my God, I have no case. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the other conspiracy. I meant to, uh, yeah, what is that? <laughs> oh my God. So on Twitter yesterday, I don't remember who started it, but pe there was like a lot of people just going, okay, this is way over the top. Do you remember John Walsh from like America's Most Wanted? Yes. How he lost his son at a very yes. young age. Oh my gosh. Yes. He's been around forever. <laughs> The people that are, I'm sure Laura Loomer is behind this, or if she's not, she's probably at least on board with this idea. Oh God, what? <laughs> how is he connected? To, how is he connected to DeSantis? How? He is DeSantis. This is oh the my new, God. Oh my God. This no. is the new, this is the new conspiracy. I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> then it is, it is Laura Loomer. It's gotta be. <laughs> she's the one who came up with it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know where it came from, but when I saw this, I was like, you just, it just, you can't write this. You can't even write this level of comedy. Like, this is all. <laughs> he's like, that guy is like three feet tall, too. <laughs> he is. I mean, Wait, no, listen, that, Walsh. No, is they're it? saying, run, they're saying John Walsh's son is DeSantis. John Walsh's son is DeSantis. The, he's the like, son who is like, like missing or whatever. Dude, he's blonde. He's like, so he's coming back. So they're saying he's like a, a John Kennedy that like disappeared and. Yes. And now he's back the, and he's the, like the, reappeared. The Walsh kid that disappeared has turned into Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis. <laughs> That's what they're what saying. What is John? I'm sure John Walsh is like, can you just stop? Can I, you not? I, you just, it's just too much. And so all the same crap that has, you know, that everybody that tried to like make up all kinds of crap about Donald Trump, it's the same people doing the same thing. Only okay, they're, so, they're, they've got a new target now. Okay. So they're saying Adam Walsh. Yes. Adam Walsh is Ron DeSantis is what they're right. saying. Adam <laughs> Walsh. That because that was his name, Adam. I okay. Mean, so, yeah. Laura Laura Limmer has a world. she has an unhealthy amount of hatred. I don't know if she started it. Do not I know. say that for no, sure. No, 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 I don't no I'm know. not. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying just separate from this conspiracy theory. Oh, she yeah. has an unhealthy amount of hatred for oh, Ron my gosh. DeSantis. It is like, unhealthy. Yeah, it's unhealthy. She probably needs to um look into getting some therapy for that. Because it's, it's it's becoming unhealthy. It, it's I think weird, it's reached the point of unhealthy. It right? is it is super weird. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys, if you're not getting your dogs their their green powder from Rough Greens, why are you not doing that? Why don't you want your dogs to live longer as long as they can possibly live? This helps them do that. This is the greatest stuff. Let me show you what it looks like in case you haven't seen it before. I'm gonna try not to spill it, but like. Can I can you see, see it. See the green powder. Uh -huh. You just sprinkle a little bit of this on your dog's dead food cuz that's what it is. You're feeding your dog's dead dry food. That brings their food to life. It gives them all the nutrients, minerals, vitamins that they need to live long healthy lives. It gives them everything they need that their dead food isn't giving them. And I love giving it to my dogs because they love it and they get all like tail waggy about it. Um, and so dogs love it, which is an added bonus, right? It's like hard to give your dog something that they don't want. They want this. And you can see for yourself, if you want to just try it for free, you can get a jumpstart trial bag of Rough Greens. You just cover the shipping. And all you have to do is visit Rough Chicks. That's R-U-F-F chicks.com ask for your free jumpstart trial bag check it out it's actually a, a nice size little bag oh my gosh and it is yeah yeah you'll have it for a couple of weeks at least a few mm -hmm. weeks you'll be able to see what your dog thinks you'll be able to see if you smell a difference in their breath see a difference in their coat so definitely worth checking out roughchicks.com okay other uh headlines the world health organization has just announced <laughs> And I know this will come as a huge shock to everybody that kids and adolescents probably don't need the COVID vaccine. Oh my God. 
So you're a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> Remember oh my god. When it like you should yeah. you couldn't say that. You couldn't say that out loud. Oh my gosh, yeah. you should be canceled. You should be shut down. Our YouTube video is gonna be erased for saying that. <laughs> god, these people are insufferable. Yeah. Let's see if the CDC catches on. I don't know um if Rochelle Walensky oh will be god. as inclined as the who to say, yeah, I, maybe it's time for us to admit this what everybody has been screaming forever. I don't know if the CDC will say it or not. Say that to um, all the people on the East Coast who are still masked up and all the people oh in God. California who I saw who were still masking their kids up. Oh my Seriously. Gosh. I just can't. I cannot with this. Oh, you're, you think, you think they don't need it? I'm sorry, wow. This, is just, this infuriates me because for years people were like treated as outcasts for yeah. having that belief. And now who decides that, oh yeah, okay, we're going to say this now. Maybe we can slip this one through the goalie just right. like, like over the radar. No, nope, that one, that one, that one stood out to me. <laughs> Good, with people. I know. It's unbelievable. I want to start seeing some apologies, some mass apologies to people, to normal people. I will not people. hold your breath for I'm that. I'm not holding my breath at all. I'm not going to do that. I don't think Because I too also that. know that that's not good for me. <laughs> <laughs> holding my breath. God. Pretty soon that's going to be a conspiracy and you're going to get right. blocked for right. saying I'll such a thing. Um, I don't know if you guys have been following what's going on with this reparations committee in California. There's a committee that, it, or a task force, I should say. I think that's the name that they're using. A reparations task force for the state of California that has been meeting regularly and talking about paying reparations to qualified black people, black Californians. And the 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 price tag for these reparations keeps going up and up and up and up and up. Now it has gotten so absurd that, it's like two times the state's annual budget is what they are saying is required in reparations. They are saying it will necess necessitate an 800 billion with a B down payment oh for the reparations. They oh want like $5.6 million per person. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I, I told uh, our son, I texted him the other day and I'm like, you should just identify as a black person. Why not? It gets you some reparations because he lives in California. I'm like, just identify. I mean, this everybody identifies as everything. And I'm, I'm going to identify as a tuna fish sandwich or something. I mean, so just like, just identify as a black. Why can't people identify as black people? If you can, if, if can. dudes, if dudes can identify as women and women can identify as men. Why can't, I mean, seriously, we've talked yeah. about this before, you know, Zuby talked about, talked about how it's like the, the constructs and whatnot and how this honestly, identify as a black person, get you some money I and mean, then send some to me. Cause I put you through college. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's right. You are owed reparations. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. And then, uh, lastly before, well, actually a couple things still before we get to videos. Um, so we've talked about chat GPT before, and now, you know, Microsoft essentially owns it and they are, we've shown that CEO guy, that weird guy, uh, of the open AI. They are developing um, this AI, this chat GPT. It is getting more and more advanced all the time. And now people like Elon Musk, Steve Wozniak, who was formerly with um, Apple, there's like a thousand tech leaders who have signed on to this letter saying, we got to put a pause on AI development because it is about to like ruin humanity. Oh, and that's nice. Yeah, I mean they're they're genuinely terrified of mm -hmm. of the possibilities of this, and Elon is signed on to it, and and is what the letter is saying to the um, developers essentially of this technology. They are saying, please let's have a six month pause on development so that the tech community can come together and figure out how to make it not like take over the world. You know what I mean? Cause I feel like that's kind of an important thing. And they are suggesting that for any AI tech people who don't sign on to the letter that the government get involved with regulating AI companies in some way. Now, all these tech leaders, including Steve and, and Elon signed on the people who didn't Google, Microsoft and the CEO of OpenAI. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's it's surprise full steam ahead. I mean, yeah, it, surprise, surprise. Bill Gates didn't sign on to that. Oh my gosh, really? It's amazing. I'm so, so weird. surprised by that. The Bill Gates didn't sign on. 
that's so Isn't weird. Isn't that weird? Yeah, and I think Elon was quoted as, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but he was saying that that Bill Gates just doesn't understand that technology. I think he probably understands it more than you think. I think that he's just a power-hungry, weird, evil troll, <laughs> you know, as evidenced by all the farmland that guy has bought up. Seriously. <laughs> he's that guy. Is He's a, that guy freaks me out. Yeah. So, I mean, I, yeah, the fact that people are okay with this, they're okay with playing God and, you know, doing really this. There's too many people that are okay with playing God these days. In too a many. multitude of ways. In a right? multitude of ways. Yeah. Too many people that are okay with that. And that's not okay. It's really scary. And, and what's also happening, you know, we've talked about the whole potential TikTok ban. You're going to start hearing, if you haven't already, about this Restrict Act, this bipartisan mm -hmm. legislation coming out of the Senate, signed on by John Thune um, and others. I think it was started by Mark Warner. And it's ostensibly the ban TikTok bill. However, word on the street, and I haven't read it for myself, so I don't want to speculate too much, but there's a lot of il initial concern about it because it goes way fa way farther than just TikTok. It talks about having the government having access to your Wi-Fi, your right. ring doorbell, it having the ability to shut down whatever it wants to, control whatever it wants to control on the internet. They're talking about having closed door meetings by unelected uh, you know, appointed by the president people to decide these things. It's, it sounds really, really bad. Mm -hmm. Um, and so people need to be paying attention and reading that bill for themselves. I plan to, I just haven't yet. And so I don't want to say right. much more about it than that, except that people need to do their research about well, it and contact their representatives. When I see Mitt Romney sign on to something, I'm like, I don't know about this now. This kind of makes me nervous. And plus, you know, Lindsey Graham was on Jesse Waters' show last night, and Jesse Waters called him out. I mean, he just, like, took him to the mat. And he was like, listen, I don't like this, this, and this on it. And and it really bothered me listen, I, because Lindsey Graham didn't know what was in the – he didn't know it was in the legislation. And he and was so, he was confused because he was saying that there's, there's two, two different, different bills ones. floating around. Right. There's so, two different ones. Uh, but don't you think as a senator you should know? I mean, it's one thing for you and me not to have read the, the right. legislation, okay? But when you're being paid and you're the one who's sponsoring it, mm -hmm. you should know what's in the damn legislation. That's you your think. job. That is your job to read it. So, I mean, stay up late at night and maybe read it. If you're the yeah. one who's sponsoring it. So that was very disheartening when I saw that. And yeah, when it's an overreach, when they start putting all this other pork and crap into bills, into legislation, we should all be a little jiggity about that, as you would say. Yeah. And I don't, you know, it should just be a one line deal. If you want to ban it in government, that's fine. Like I was okay when they started talking about banning it in government, banning it like in federal, whatever. If you want to, if you want to protect us from China, I get it. I mean, like that's, I feel like that's a great thing. Protect us. If from a national security standpoint, yes, we want to be protected from China and, and them and what they want to do to us and what they want to do to our children. But from a personal responsibility standpoint, it's my job to protect my kid from TikTok. Yeah. If you don't want your kid on TikTok, then freaking parent. Or the parent. <laughs> I mean, this, that's how I felt all along. Like, it's not the government's responsibility for them to parent your kid. So maybe buck up and do that yourself as a well, parent. Uh, yeah, I mean, and even all the people that were on board with the idea of a TikTok ban are now looking at, and hearing about this restrict act and being like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. This is not what we asked right. for. This is not what we I don't want signed you look on at, to. I don't want you looking at my stuff, government. I don't want right. you looking through my Wi-Fi and my ring doorbell and all the... I don't want you looking at any of my stuff. I didn't sign on for that. If you want to ban it at the government level, by all means, do that and protect yeah. us from China. But you don't get to look at all of my stuff. Mm -mm. That's no. exactly it's right. It's unconstitutional. Yeah. Uh, another reminder about these Eden Pure Thunderstorm air purifiers. Uh, they've extended the sale, you guys. They've extended the sale on the buy one, get one for free sale on these amazing air purifiers. Um, my husband used this in the kitchen last, not last night, but the night before because he made salmon. And oh, if you are not salmon. a person who enjoys the smell of <laughs> fish British. or Which Brussels is sprouts, I use it a lot when I make Brussels sprouts because my husband's like, seriously? <laughs> 
<laughs> what did you eat? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, these are great. You just pl you just plug these into the. They've got see the little plug. You just plug it into your wall. They take up hardly any space at all. You turn it on for just ten or fifteen minutes, even. And those nasty odors, whatever they may be, whatever they may be caused by they go away. And these are amazing. They work so fast. They can even work with a USB port. So if you want to take it in your car and your car has USB port, they even work in the car. And they've even changed the discount code for this week. So make sure that if you want to take advantage of the buy one, get one offer, you go to EdenPureDeals.com and just use code CHICKS. That's the only code you need. Code CHICKS at EdenPureDeals.com. Check them out. Um, okay. The last thing that I just wanted to mention right out of the gate, it, a moment of personal privilege, if I may, because I wanted to talk about the fact that we got a uh, video taken down on TikTok and then yes. restored. This was amazing to me because I won an appeal, you guys. I won an appeal on the TikTok. I couldn't believe it. So I did a little thing, like a little back and forth, trying to understand the argument that trans people want to make about trans women being women. And so I did a little back and forth with myself, essentially. A little skit, if you will. Posted on TikTok. It really, it took off pretty quickly. And then I saw, I got a notice that TikTok took it down for hateful behavior. And there was not a single word in that video that was remotely hateful. Not a single word. It was fast. And it it's was just, facts. and it was literally just me saying, here's the trans argument. Here's me trying to understand right. it and make sense of it. And so I couldn't believe it, it got taken down. So I did the appeal because, you know, you can just appeal it. And then normally they're like, nope, you just you suck really hard and we're not putting it back up. I won the appeal and it all happened so fast. Like I appealed and within, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes. They I bet you a lot. I bet you a lot of people don't appeal. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I bet you. I bet you they don't. I, I mean, I think you're an anomaly. That was because, crazy. Mm -hmm, because I think people just generally from a personality standpoint just from a human nature standpoint, if they get smacked by a social media platform, they're going to be like, Oh I'm yeah. Smacked I'm by a social media platform. I'm just going to just sit over here and I'm going to be in the corner <laughs> and I'm not going to fight back. They don't fight back. And so we're like, uh, uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Cause and honestly, yeah. if they, if they ban TikTok or if they take down our account, right. it's whatever, like that's, we're going to move on with our lives. You know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, if you, if you haven't seen, I would just, I would love for people to go and watch it. And, and you, you tell me what you think set off the hate behavior, uh, conduct. It's also on our Instagram at chicks on right. So yeah. I was going to say, if you don't want to watch it on TikTok, which I don't have TikTok either, <laughs> you can watch it on our Instagram. Instagram's even better. Maybe yeah. go to Instagram because you can then see you, it can both our Insta you can support our Instagram account, which, you know, I would, I would really appreciate because I run that. So it's Instagram. It's just at Chicks on Right. It's okay. there in both places. Okay, let's get to, I think I've covered all the things uh, that we wanted to get to before videos. We're going to revisit the whole Nashville uh, terror attack. That's what I'm going <laughs> to call it because that's essentially what it was. And I've got several clips to share with you about that that are important. The first is uh, Tucker talking about it, talking about Biden essentially laughing it off and making a joke about it in the midst of that horrible I mean, it's just been a horrible few days, right? And he makes a joke in the midst of that about it. Um, I also have KJP was asked a very direct question in her presser yesterday about whether or not Joe Biden would confiscate guns from current gun owners. And you guys, she is not ruling it out. She is not denying that that is on the table. And I think everybody should be concerned about that. Um, Jamal Bowman and Thomas Massey got into each other's faces a little bit in the hallways, I guess, of the Capitol mm -hmm. about what happened in Nashville. And that Bowman guy is a lunatic. Like he does not know how to use inside voice and to have a normal conversation with someone. He just tries to shout Thomas Massey down. It's ridiculous. And then lastly, um, the Senate pastor is now getting political. So the Senate, and you'll hear it, you'll, you'll, you'll hear what he says. He's already, he's, he's apparently in the camp of Democrats. He's, and yeah, I didn't picked, realize the pastor the right. yeah, was, was supposed to pick sides in this debate. Mm -hmm. So those are the four clips that you're going to see. Let's get to them. Only concern. And then NBC News ran this headline, one of many like it. Tennessee's trans communities concerned because of the focus 
on the identity of the shooter. No update from NBC on how the Christian community in Nashville is doing, because who cares? They're just mortals. Their concerns aren't meaningful. Joe Biden certainly doesn't care. Watch him chuckle as he talks about Monday's massacre. People who believe their God will always turn their rage and frustration outward. They will never blame themselves. How could they? They are God. So you should not be surprised to learn that in the wake of this shooting, when their agenda is revealed for all to see, there will be no contrition, no changing of ways. There will only be acceleration and there will be more violence coming. And they're telling us that. Again, with the playing God thing, again, with the thinking that, you know, I'm better than you. I'm in charge. We're God. Again, with that, it's like and he's right. It it won't end well. It's not okay. It's just not okay. And the joking. What is oh that? Oh my gosh! What just the laughing the, off, like the laughing, so... yeah, and and the, the yeah with the laughing, and he's done that more than once over the past week. Yeah, and it's, it's just, just so inappropriate. It's, it's it, more than inappropriate. It's despicable. It's disgusting. It just it makes me sick. My thirteen year old saw him doing that, and she looked at me and she goes, "What is he doing, mom?" Wow. When kids see that, when ki- she's a kid, and when she sees how disgusting that is. I mean, I, there are no words, Gosh. no words. Well, and, and, and the, the media has been so utterly disgusting about this. There was a, a headline from the, from Reuters I, and I, I couldn't believe, like, I couldn't believe it was real. I had to go and look for myself. Cause I was like, there's no way that they would frame what happened in Nashville this way. S- see if you can spot what's missing from this headline. Here's how Reuters described it. Former Christian school student kills three children and three staff in a Nashville shooting. Oh my God. Can you even believe that? I can't, I can, I can't believe it. I can with our media. I can. It was the Christians who were the target and they're trying to position that trans maniac Right. As a former Christian, former Christian school student, student. I, right. I was, I just, because I they're, like, wow, they want so badly to paint her as the victim. Right. And I'm, I mean, it makes my stomach just, oh my God, I just can't even with these people. How dare they make her the victim? How dare they try to make her a victim? Oh in my this? Gosh. And, and then, you think okay. of any other school shooting, any other, any other shooting where this happened and, and have they ever done this before? Have they ever tried to make the shooter the victim? Think about it. I know. I mean, I'm just, I'm disgusted by what they're doing. And then the fact that they haven't come out, they haven't given us the manifesto and every, every other case where there's been a manifesto, we've seen it. Why haven't we well, seen I didn't this see one? today that they're, that we are going to get it really only after the FBI analyzes it. Oh, and really? Then they'll release it to the public. It'll probably mm. be redacted for oh, some it'll reason. it'll be edited. It'll be edited and like, yeah. they're going to do, they're going to like, what they're going to black stuff out. How, what is that? I have no idea. What do you mean after they analyze it? Just freaking release it. What is there to analyze? It's just insanity. Well, they're very, very busy uh, trying to figure out ways that they can disarm innocent people. And so that was the question that came up in the presser yesterday and listen to KJP. The last presidential campaign, one of the Democratic contenders said that what he would do is come for AR-15s. Does the president support not just banning the sale and manufacture of semi-automatic weapons, but further than that, confiscation? Let's, let me just be very clear. What we're talking about, AR-15s, these assault weapons ban, they are weapons of war and they should not be on the streets across the country, in our communities. They should not be in schools. They should not be in grocery stores. They should not be in, in churches. That's what the president believes. Okay. okay. All right. So, so how are they, what are they going to do? Are they going to try to confiscate those from people? Because, you know, that we was have the a question and are she they gonna, would not say no. Okay. Well then how, how, what does that look like though, Mock? I mean, are they going to use our military to do that? Seriously? How are they going to do that? Because if you're going to use the military to do that, you've got a military, no offense against anybody in the military out there. Cause there are some wonderful, I know I live near a military base. And I and I am friends with lots of military folks who are amazing, wonderful, awesome people, and they're capable, and I love them. 
dearly. Um, but our military, seriously, you're going to use our, is, that's the only solution I can think of. It's it's not like you can have like cops go out and confiscate it. Or you get military is like the only solution to do that, right? And our military right now, they're they're trained in like gender studies. And like, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? And well, and, and they're also and, very, very busy uh, dealing with like other people's stuff, right? right? And being not very well sourced or not, they don't have the resources that they need. I mean, there's a whole big and, bunch of problems with the military. And right frankly, now. most of the military people that I know are very pro Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be like, seriously, I'm out. I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to go force, you know, people to give me their guns. I mean, it's, it's like, I just, I just can't see this happening in a free United States of America, a once free United States of America. I just, we're not Australia. We're just not. Yeah. And I think these people want us to be Australia. They, as so many, I'm seeing so much of that on social media over the past couple of days where they're like, why can't we be like Australia? Why can't we be like that? You know? Yeah. So Thomas Massey, you saw that uh, screenshot of hi him and his family. Mm -hmm. I, it was from like some Christmas card. So they're right. all holding their weapons. This is a family that is armed and mm -hmm. that practices and knows right. how to defend themselves. And there is absolutely 100% nothing wrong with that. Nope. Um, but Jamal Bowman has a serious problem with it. And so he got right into Thomas Massey's face. And Thomas Massey, God bless him, trying very hard to just calmly have a normal discussion, and you'll see how that goes. They're all cowards. They won't do anything to save the lives of our children at all. Cowards, pressure them, force them to respond to the question, why the hell won't you do anything to save America's children? And let them explain that all the way up until the next day of 2024. Let them explain it all the way up to election day with 2024. Yeah, They're freaking they cowards. They're gutless. They're not here. Mm. I'm talking about gun violence. You know, I'm talking about gun violence. Oh my Carry guns? You think Would you more guns sponsor? lead to more death? More guns lead to more death. Look at the data. You're not looking at any data. You're, you're, you're the for the gun lobby. No, no, Look at the data. More guns lead to more deaths. That is so but annoying with the yelling. States that have open carry laws have more deaths. States that have open carry laws have more deaths. Listen to what I'm saying. That, that's a, no one can help it. <laughs> Nine-year-old children. The, the solution is not arming teachers. Have you ever worked in a school? 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 It's a yes or no question. Have you ever worked in a school? I mean, you he, can't, you can't convert, you can't have a debate with someone like that. No, he's just wanting to get his 15 minutes of fame. He wants, he wants to get on television yep. and he's screaming at the top of his lungs to him, right? With two armed guards behind him. That's what <laughs> I love about the visual. Don't y'all love that visual? As he gets protection paid for by us. Mm -hmm. What a schmuck this guy is. Seriously. And I, I think you're that. right. I think he is desperate for desperate. like AOC level fame. Totally. This is what they all want. It's like he just wants a soundbite and he got it. We're giving mm -hmm. it to him on our show and so many other shows and so many other like, like news stations are going to be playing this today. And this people are going to be like, wait, who's Jamal Bowman? Oh, now we know who Jamal Bowman is. And meanwhile, like, look at that visual. There are armed guards behind him. Who the hell do you get? Who do you, who do you think pays for that? We pay for it. Take them away. Take them all away. I want the president of the United States to no longer have armed security. Mm -hmm. None of them. None of them should get it. All these people who are screaming to take our guns, nobody gets guns anymore. Nobody. The first person who should say, I don't want gun, I don't want gun protection anymore, should be the president of the United States. KJP. See, the elites will always take care of themselves. No, they They'll should not have it. them. They should be the first people, all these hypocritical blowhard jack offs should be the first people to go oh i don't i don't want any guns because guns are beyond guns are bad <laughs> okay well then get them out of like the purview of where we can see them protecting you because we're paying for those people to protect you so my daughter should get the same level of protection in her school because i'm paying for that school i'm paying for everybody in that school so are you guys so she should get the same level of protection as jamal bowman 
in her school. Why isn't that happening? I'm so sick of this shit. Seriously. <laughs> I wish really I could unknow his name. Yeah, you know Jamal what I mean? Bowman. Honestly. I don't want to know it ever again. Can we just all collectively unknow it? Well, Let's we try. all know it. And he's now <laughs> famous. But seriously, I want the same level of protection for my kid. Why can't we have that? Why is it so hard? This is not hard. It's never going to happen hard. because the elites only take care of themselves. And we know this because we've seen it time and time again. And now we've even got pastors, the pastor for the Senate, the official Senate pastor is all taking sides now. Check this out. Joining me now, David Jolly, former Republican congressman well, of Florida. <laughs> um, Alyssa Slock. Sorry, I want to show this moment, though, title. from yesterday on Capitol Hill. The Senate chaplain, you know, is typically this is a really rare statement to hear from him. This is what he said about what happened in Nashville. Lord, when babies die at a church school, oh my gosh. it is time for us to move beyond thoughts and prayers. Lord, deliver our senators from the paralysis of analysis that waits for the miraculous. The paralysis of analysis that waits for the America. Yeah. miraculous. My, that's my kind of preacher, you know, make you a little uncomfortable sitting there on a Sunday morning. Like, that does oh. not happen very often. Doesn't happen very often. And, you know, it's interesting if you think about it. I don't know um, who names or can remove uh, the Senate chaplain, but I suspect if there were a different majority leader, his job might be in danger right now. Um, this is something that, you know, you wish more uh, clergy would do, which is take a chance, speak your truth. Try and get people to feel a little uncomfortable and to take action. Um, I, I don't know if his thoughts and prayers are going to be any more effective than anyone else's here, because <laughs> until someone takes action, we're not uh... going to see well, much in the way of change. But it is very good to see this. And, and frankly, it's something that would have been unthinkable a while ago. And I think for the audience, it's important to keep in mind that, you know, uh, in the decade or so uh, since the, the Sandy Hook massacre, you know, you've got. Every town for gun safety, you've got Moms Demand Action, you've got March for Our Lives, you've got things like this uh, chaplain speaking out. Uh, it's good. This is going to come from from below. You know, we we've seen and we've exhaustively covered the fact that Congress seems to be stuck paralysis. Uh, but there's there's a groundswell. And that's how social transformation happens. You know, it happens gradually and then it happens suddenly. And I I I, I am encouraged. Uh, despite all of the tragedies that we're living with every day, that a lot of people are getting together and making clear that they're going to take some chances the way this chaplain did. That's Man really of the cool. Cloth saying, move beyond oh, thoughts and prayers. Yeah. That's, that's pretty big. That's really big, isn't it, Don Lemon? Yeah, I love it when they invoke God, the party that took God out of their platform in 2012. Yeah. You know, they like said, nope, we don't like God. But you know what? Let's bring him up when it's convenient for us. I'm sure well, God and really would they that. would they all be saying that stuff? Would they all be like, oh, it's so great to make people feel uncomfortable? What if that pastor had said he had prayed for the Senate to finally arm teachers or to harden schools? Well, they what would they say then? They it'd would be, never it'd be Chuck it. Schumer right. demanding him to be fired. That, that's well, what it, would it, happen. Be, it would be Chuck Schumer saying there needs to be a separation of church and state. <laughs> I mean, they're such hypocrites. That's, yeah, they're total hypocrites. They they invoke the name of God when it's convenient for them. That's what they do. And then they're like, hey, kill all the babies. <laughs> Woo! Gosh, it's just so frustrating. Thing. God, these people. Insufferable. Um, okay, moving on. Yesterday we uh, showed you some clips of <laughs> of uh, Alejandro Mayorkas getting absolutely hammered in a hearing. Well, the hearing continued yesterday. And uh, remember yesterday we played this fantastic clip of Kennedy just saying, hey, so about assault weapons, what is that exactly? Remember? And it was just a glorious clip. He right. came back for more today, which or yesterday, um, which I'll show you, which is phenomenal. But first, there's another representative. I think her last name is Britt, Representative Britt, who tries once again to get Mayorkas to admit that what's happening on the border is A, a crisis, and B, that the border isn't secure. So let's see how successful she was in getting him to say those things. Uh, do you believe that there is a crisis at the southwest border? 
um, uh, Ranking Member Britt, I think there is a very serious challenge at the southern border, as I have articulated. <laughs> yes, sir. Are you willing to call it a crisis? I consider it a very significant challenge, and a I am challenge. focused on the substance of the issue and the devotion of resources most effectively to address the challenge that we confront as a country. Yes, sir. Oh. Additionally, I'd like to talk about the border and its security. Um, the chair has already alluded to the fact that whether we talk about operational control or whether we talk about maximizing resources, I'm actually not interested in those definitions. What I am interested in is from your perspective as the Secretary of Homeland Security, do you believe we have a secure border? Um, uh, Ranking Member Britt, I think I have addressed this issue. Uh, <laughs> as uh, I mentioned, the words we use do not define the the actions that we take, the challenge that we confront defines the actions that we take, and we are using every ounce of energy and resource we have to address the challenges not only at our southern border with respect to irregular migration, not only with respect to the trafficking of fentanyl, but across the entire breadth of mission of the Department of Homeland Security. Respectfully, oh, Mr. God. Secretary, it's, it's not enough. We have a humanitarian crisis, a national security crisis. <laughs> she's awesome. She's so good. She like, she I mean, she really did. She's lovely, though, isn't she? She oh, just yeah. has like a, such a friendly disposition. It's like what you would do if you were in that position. <laughs> You'd be like, "Hi." So I mean, it's it's a crisis, right? It's a crisis, right? <laughs> yeah, but then you know, my fangs would come out. Oh my god, I would be jumping over that table like <laughs> swinging, man. I cannot. How do these people not do that? Oh, oh my gosh. Remarkable. Well, and, then, and then yesterday when Kennedy, remember we played the clip of Kennedy asking Mayorkas, so, hey, do you agree with uh, that there should be a ban on assault weapons, right? You, you agree right. with Biden. And uh -huh. Mayorkas was like, oh, yeah, I totally agree. And then he's like, so what is that? What is an assault weapon? You mind defining that for us? Because they all assault you, right? I mean, right. this is the thing I find so interesting about that phrase. I mean, I said that to my husband the other day. I'm like, that's the dumbest phrase ever that they're like, ban assault weapons. I mean, because in the end, they all have the ability to, in essence, assault you. <laughs> Every gun. Well, this is why no, they're so... You would think that after, after your, the day before yesterday, when that happened, right... And Mayorkas, knowing that he had to come back for more questioning to the same Senate committee, you would think that sometime between then and the next time he was appearing, he, would find a he might learn a definition. Right. May, may want to come up with one. Yeah, look That's it up. what Senator Kennedy thought. Yeah. So we gave him another <laughs> chance. Right? We could be friends. I said Senator Kennedy can totally be BFFs. <laughs> And yep. I know that this one runs a little bit long, you guys, but it has to because it has to. it's Senator Kennedy. Behold. I know you to be an intelligent man and a thinking person, so I'm, I know you thought about <laughs> Overestimating. it. Overestimating. What is it about a military? What do you mean by a military-style weapon? Um, uh, <laughs> Senator, um, I really must, must say that you are probing a very, very important area, oh. definitionally, definitionally. That's uh, in which I do not have the requisite uh, expertise. Oh, I will say this. I'm a colossal dumbass. I will say this. When yeah. we see, okay. when we see the tragedy in Nashville, and it is not the first such tragedy that we see, when I engage with my international counterparts and they ask me almost invariably first, what is going on with all the mass killings in the United States? And why are these assault weapons uh, yes. disseminated so broadly? I say that we need legislation. To well, ban let me let me follow up on that. So you support an assault weapon ban, but you don't have a definition. Is that right? Uh, Senator. Uh, I, I think that um, you understand where I stand. No, I don't. No, no. I don't. You made a very bold statement, very uh, firmly saying we should ban all assault weapons. And all <laughs> I'm asking is what, in your mind, is an assault weapon? I mean, you say it's military style. Does that mean it looks like a military weapon? Uh, uh, Senator, I, I believe I've addressed uh, yeah. I mean, what, what if it's if a, what if it's I, I a think... single shot twenty two that looks like a military weapon? Would you ban <laughs> that because it's scary looking to you? 
Senator, I think I've addressed um, your question no. to the best of my abilities. No. But, but you haven't. I mean, I'm right. trying to understand your secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. And as is your right, as an American, you believe we should ban assault weapons. But it bothers me you can't tell me what you would ban. Senator, I would be very pleased to speak with experts and um, oh my God. confer with you subsequent to today's hearing and share with you a proposed definition that could be inserted into the legislation that is so just desperately insert needed. Insert it. Just but in the meantime, I'm going to just say that I want to ban I want to all ban. of them that I don't know what they are. I want to ban them, but I don't know what I want to ban. I just oh want to God. ban them. I just want to ban them, you guys. We can maybe insert it later <laughs> after I talk to the experts. We can in insert it. Definition, schmefinition. We, we don't, I don't know. I just want to <laughs> just ban it all. Just ban it. <laughs> this is the thing. Yeah. What a schmuck this guy is. I know. It's a amazing, colossal right? amazing. schmuck. And it's, it's so much money. We give these people so much money and they're so unqualified to do the jobs they do. <laughs> Sleep well, everybody. Wow. Um, I know yesterday I introduced everybody. Or, or Actually, I shouldn't say that. There's probably a lot of people who watched who knew exactly who Deb Haland was. I just didn't know about her until yesterday. So I don't want to assume that everyone else was as ignorant as I was. This about is the Secretary, the Secretary of Interior. Of Interior. By the way, I went to um, the Facebook page of the Secretary of the Interior yesterday. And um, it's all pictures of the outside. Like, it's all pictures. <laughs> it's all pictures. It's all pictures. Picture. It's all, and I thought it was so funny because somebody <laughs> somebody asked that question and I was dying. Somebody on the Facebook page goes, "Wait, wait this is the Secretary of the Interior's page. Why are all the pictures of the outside?" <laughs> I was dying, you guys. I was dying. I was That's like, "This the is why, best thing ever." This is why I love people. It's oh like, my god. This is, why because somebody asked that question on the facebook and nobody answered that person and i was like you know what that guy deserves an answer that huh? guy deserves an answer to his question why are all the pictures of the outside <laughs> secretary of the interior's face that's so oh my great god, oh my dying. gosh well, yeah. So if you were ignorant like I was <laughs> until yesterday about knowing who Deb Haland is, she is, in fact, a cabinet member, a diversity hire, uh, another one of Joe Biden's for the cabinet. And so she's been she's been getting grilled pretty hard in her own uh, hearing. And so I have another clip of a whole other person questioning her, which is absolutely delicious and spotlights her in her complete incompetence. And I know you guys are going to love it. Um, next, I have a clip of Janet Yellen being asked why, while Matt Taibbi was in front of Congress testifying about the Twitter files, why did the IRS visit his home? And it's an interesting exchange uh, between that congressperson and Janet Yellen. And then we get into some uh, stuff about NATO. So Lloyd Austin was also in a hearing yesterday oh, and he got God. hammered pretty good first. By, and I don't actually know who the person was. that was questioning him about the <clears throat> um, unfairness that all of these other Western countries, the, the, the shame that should be on their heads for not spending nearly what the United States is on Ukraine. So there's that clip. And then lastly, to cap it off, Matt Gates. Hence my name today, Matt Gates. Matt Gates had the most beautiful interrogation of Lloyd Austin about <sighs> drag shows. Oh my I God. couldn't, I couldn't cut it, you guys. I couldn't. You no. have to see most of it. It's not all of it, but you're gonna and see you, most of it. You can't look away. You can't you just can't look away. It's like a thing of horror <laughs> and disgust. <laughs> you're just like, what am I watching? <laughs> It's just unbelievable. Yes, yeah, our military, you guys. I oh the upper echelons, okay? Now, the people in the lower are I, I love you, but the upper echelons, I don't love you. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, there's some there's a serious leadership problem. Serious so problem. Those are the clips that you're about to see. We're going to start of course with Hayland because wow. <laughs> you think it is better for our country to get oil and gas? from federal lands in this country with our environmental standards, or is it better to get it from places like Venezuela, Russia, uh, Middle East, and other places with vastly inferior environmental standards? Where, where would you prefer that that oil and gas come from? 
Senator, what I can say is that uh, President Biden is 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 dedicated and committed to making sure that we have an energy independent nation. Well, but the response to my question, where would you prefer to get that oil and gas? Our, our, as I mentioned many times, the oil production in this country is up on federal lands. We are doing, uh, we're moving those permits through, we're doing our jobs, and um, I appreciate the question. <laughs> Well, oh but you God. do acknowledge that you have restricted access oh as far as production on federal lands and you have raised royalty rates. Do you at least acknowledge that? I, uh, we are working to make sure that the, um, that the work on our public lands is balanced and um, we, we care deeply about the fu ener energy future of this country. Oh Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> I can't like, it, oh my God, my 13 year old could do a better job. She'd be able to answer questions better than this absolute moron. This is she has unreal. no idea. She has no idea what she's doing. No idea what she's doing. None. I mean, no that idea. is, that's just embarrassing. It's like a humiliating thing to behold that that's God. a top leadership cabinet member being paid $235,000 a year. I, that that's our cabinet. I, and people are asking, like, how do, how do these idiots get their jobs? I, you know what? I honestly don't know. I honestly, because it's not like she slept with anybody. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm not even exaggerating. I don't know. Maybe she did. I don't, it's like, I don't know how that works. But look well, at her. Biden cares about diversity. And so who cares about qualifications? She is the right gender. She's got a little, she's a person of color, allegedly. Is she so, a person of color? I can't I think tell. So. I think there may be. What, I, what I is happening? Know. It's a social construct. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no idea what's going on. But I just, I am astounded. I'm astounded that this woman has this job. I mean, I honestly, I, I, don't I knew know. you'd love it. I knew you guys would love it because I, I, I was just blown away listening to that. Merit. But it gets even better because it doesn't we also matter. Merit, merit doesn't matter anymore. You guys. No, of course it doesn't not. matter. It just doesn't. Mm -mm. Wow. We also have Janet Yellen uh, being asked about essentially the IRS raid. I mean, they didn't raid Taibbi's home, but they did pay him a visit or pay his house a visit while he was actually at Congress. And so I love the question to Janet Yellen, which is which is basically what are the odds of that being a coincidence? Let's you're a math person. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me the odds of that being a coincidence. It's glorious. And then that <laughs> Muppet tries to answer. She is Here a it Muppet. Is. Oh, I can't hear it. I know it's, it's messed up. The audio got messed up. Oh no. Why did it work and then not work? <sighs> I wanted to hear that. Oh my God. That's... Because that's, that's got the Matt Gates thing in it too. And it's <coughs> no, got, no, oh no. My God. We have to hear the Matt Gates thing. You have to pull it from Twitter or something. You have to, I know. we have to hear the so Matt Gates thing. Oh my gosh. You guys, why is the sound screwing you up? You guys, we have to hear the Matt Gates thing. We have to, okay. Then we have to spend some time pontificating about who she slept with. Go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Everybody you do that. Go. I'm going to try to get it the sound to work. She slept with you guys. Go. When Damn you it. look at this. <laughs> okay, the good news, the good news is that the audio does seem to pick up after Janet Yellen. So I don't okay. I think she's the only one right. we're missing. All right, and essentially, well. I, I I told you she was asked, "What are the you're a math person. What are the chances that that was a coincidence?" And she just She's a Muppet, and she was just like, well, I don't, I, I. And she's she like, doesn't it's answer. It's time she to can't. start the music. It's time <laughs> to start the show. That's what she started doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, okay, so I'm, I'm hopeful uh, that we're going to get the good stuff still. This is a representative <laughs> talking to Lloyd Austin now about NATO not paying their fair share. And it's extraordinary in just the math. Like when you see the actual chart, you're going to be infuriated and you're right to be infuriated. Here we go. Short. And when the American people see the disparity in how much the United States is providing and then how much large economies, 46 billion oh my versus God. Germany, two and a half billion versus Italy, 700 million, less than a billion. 
France, yeah. which is four times the size in the terms of their economy of Poland. You can't argue uh, with a bar chart. Less than that. Mr. Secretary, no. I know you've had a lot of meetings, a lot of engagement. I, we can dispense with that. What are we doing to actually have burden sharing with our yeah. European allies? This war is on their doorstep. Right. God. They're, the Germans have already backed away from their 2% commitment. Yeah, that chart should piss you off. What are we doing off. to actually get them to step up to the plate? And would you call this burden sharing? Would you call Trump this fair it. if you were an American taxpayer? Well, I, again, we're going to do everything that, that we can to make oh, sure really? that uh, Ukraine uh, is successful. Uh, but um, what we will continue to do is continue to engage at, at all levels. You know, my level, Secretary of State, uh, <clears throat> President. Uh, and uh, to encourage but the engagement mr secretary according to actual metrics isn't effective right and what i think when i talk to my constituents the american Losers. people about continuing support for as long as it takes as the president say they ask me this question what the hell are these large economies doing the germans in particular yes to step up the eu economies together are the same size as the as the american economy right i mean they're the, they're roughly the, the the same size so do you think it's fair for them to question whether this, for the American people to question whether this is true burden sharing, number one. And number two, how many countries now have lived up to their 2% commitment despite years and years of engagement? How many out of the 30 NATO countries have lived up to their 2% GDP? I, I don't have the current. It's seven. Uh, yeah. Seven out of 30. That's pathetic. Gosh. So I think it's reasonable for the American taxpayer to be sick and tired of subsidizing European social spending. Yeah. Just keep yeah. collecting keep collecting your check, Lloyd. I, exactly. That's exactly. all he cares about. He just cares about his check and his pension. Keep, and this whole the, the 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 wordsmithing, right? This whole well, we're going to continue to engage with them. What the hell does that mean? Nothing. You go it means and you nothing. say exactly what Trump did, which is you pony right. up or we're freaking <clears throat> not defending you. He it doesn't then. matter though. It doesn't matter though, Mock. These guys will never be fired. No one's ever fired in the government. No one's ever fired in the military. No one's ever fired. Nothing happens. There's no accountability. These guys, especially in the upper echelon of the military, nothing happens to them. They know that they can get on that stand and be like, well, I mean, we'll continue to engage. <laughs> That's it. They can say that bull crap and then they can just go back to their desk and collect a check. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it. Okay, buckle in, because this last clip uh, from cabinet hearings yesterday of Matt Gates talking to Lloyd Austin still about drag shows is epic, okay? It's a little on the long side, but again, I couldn't cut anything. You're just going to have to know, since there's no live stream tomorrow, today's show is going to go long, okay? Because we still got a lot more to get <laughs> We're to. We're going long. We're everybody. going long today. <laughs> so <laughs> buckle in, and especially buckle in for this masterpiece from Matt Gates. Oh Much God, taxpayer so money should go to fund drag queen story hours on military bases. You know, drag, drag queen story hours is not something that uh, the department funds. Well, wait a second. Uh, that's actually not what the record seems to suggest. You were going to fund one at Ramstein Air Force Base. That one got canceled, but that's DOD insignia. That's a drag queen story hour for children, then also at uh, Malstrom Air Force Base outside of Great Falls, Montana, you had a, a drag queen story hour for kids. At the Joint Base Langley Eustis, you put on a drag queen story hour on a Saturday for the first ever kid-friendly diversity, equity, inclusion summer festival. And at Nellis Air Force Base, you had the Drag U Nellis on June 17th. Who funded these things, Mr. Secretary? Listen, uh, drag shows and uh, are not something that the Department of Defense uh, supports or funds. So. Well, wait, why, why are they happening on military bases? I just, I just showed you the evidence. Why are they happening? <laughs> I will say again, this is not something that we support or fund. Well, you, so you think <laughs> hosting a drag queen story hour on a military base isn't supporting the drag queen story hour? I stand by what I just said. But, but uh, you may stand by it, but it's belied by the evidence over and over again. I mean, are, 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 are you aware of the uh, piece? Uh, Biden's military, Air Force Base in Montana, holds drag show, drag queen story hour for kids in the Western Journal. Are you aware of that? Again? 
I will but, say what I've said yeah, before. You're saying what you're saying, but I guess it just doesn't <clears throat> comport with the facts. General Milley, this will be my last time to question you. You mentioned two years ago that you wanted to better understand. What oh, then he starts talking to a whole other person. To Milley. He started yeah. talking to General Milley. Wasn't that amazing? It He's was like, amazing. And can... Lloyd Austin, it's like he knows that he was wrong. And I, it's like, I don't understand, like, is this guy, if he knows he's wrong, is he, so again, I go back to the whole, so he's just collecting a check. This guy is a pathetic excuse for a man. Like, so he well, knows and it's, it's happening. It's kind of like I, like I was speculating before we went live. I, I, I think he, it seems like he is annoyed by the whole drag show being on military bases thing. And yet he also has to tow Joe Biden's line. Okay. So well, he's like have riding this weird fence. Yeah, well, have some integrity. How can you live with yourself? Seriously. I mean, you're not a man then. Well, if you're, if you're yeah. allowing that to happen on your watch, I mean, that's you're essentially in charge of that. You're the one who is able to control whether or not that happens. You're at the upper, you're in the upper echelon. You're the one who's able to say whether or not that happens. And he's allowing it to happen. What a giant wuss that guy is. Well, you're not, a, he fits you're right a in. Pathetic excuse for a man you're not even a man at that point like you're a, a guy in the military who is at that upper level shame on you like seriously these men aren't men anymore and he's the same guy that would say and he continues to say that he's proud of the way that afghanistan's withdrawal worked yeah out. i saw that yesterday too i'm just <sighs> like what? Okay. Really? You're proud of that? Yeah. I, I'm sure that the 13 families of those dead soldiers that you just haven't gotten justice for yet, I'm mm -hmm. sure they love hearing that, that yeah. you're proud of it. I'm really sure. Wow. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving on. I've got a couple of clips from Joe Rogan, who when he is on fire, he is so extra, extra good. Now, this is for sure hide your kids and hide your wives because joe rogan is a huge fan of the f-bomb and i love him for it yeah um so two clips they're they're not very long the first one he's talking about trans women invading women's sports um and then in the second he's talking about how unbelievable it is that people in the mainstream media just aren't addressing the fact that biden can barely put together a coherent sentence here those clips are let's hope they work to those other girls that are competing against her is just a fucking crime. It's horrible. Imagine if you're a biological woman, you are working your ass off. You are fully dedicated to being the best of the best. You're dotting all your I's and crossing all your T's. You are watching your diet. You're watching your recovery. You are fucking trying. And this person who just decides they're a woman with testosterone flowing through their body for their entire life just dominates you yeah. it's fucking maddening and it's fucking maddening that we have gotten into this ideological battle this 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 cultural end of the road ideological battle where we're allowing that and where people will step up and virtue signal and defend this that it like is as if it has anything to do with being compassionate and considerate and and trans rights or lbgtq plus ai whatever the fuck it is rights <laughs> it's nonsense it's we are a, a society that needs a real problem and we are fixating on these fucking very strange issues and deciding that we're going to correct all the inequities and inequality in the world by allowing these people to express their truth. And you're encouraging mental illness. You're encouraging virtue signaling. You're encouraging mass ideology, this uh, ideological capture of an entire culture where people know things aren't true. You know it's not right. You know it's not accurate. You know it's not scientifically true. And yet people have to espouse these certain, th certain things. Because if they don't, they'll be labeled transphobic. I mean, it's so fucking wild. Yep. And you know what? <laughs> if this were happening to men, if this somehow were happening to men, it wouldn't be allowed. It just wouldn't happen. I don't know in what world it would happen to men. But if for some reason there was some group of people that were infringing on them. Right. It wouldn't happen. I, I mean, I, I hate even to say that out loud because people are going to be like, you sound like a crazy feminist, Daisy. Okay, fine. I sound like a crazy feminist. <laughs> but if for some reason it was happening to them and they were losing their rights 
it wouldn't happen. We wouldn't. Well, allow it. and and it's not ever going to be a problem, right? Because no, that's the whole point: not. is that biological right. women cannot compete we in can't. biological men's sports. They're not going to be breaking records. They're not going to be taking the no. places of men. They're not going to be erasing them no. from their own freaking spaces. No. And that's the issue. This we is already, why it's that is why it becomes a feminism issue, right? We already fought so hard to have our space as women. I mean, we already. I, I watch my daughter practice three hours a day, six days a week and work her ass off like and and then i think to myself she's gonna have she potentially could have scholarships taken away from her by men mm -hmm. it's not okay and feminists are silent not okay it's just not okay they're, and they're I, worse than silent they are encouraging it they're encouraging it and right. that's that's even more horrifying right that they're and just you know allowing it to happen and you know what's crazy men are fighting for her. I see men like Joe Rogan fighting for my daughter and I, and women are just sitting back going, Oh my God, but trans rights, screw you. <laughs> like, right. and you know what, and you know what it is? You know who it is? It's the women who have never participated in a sport. It's the women who, who like have never done anything active or athletic in their lives. Those are the women, the soft ones, the ones who have never done anything. Those are the women who are like, but trans rights, really? You know what? Work for something in your life and see what it's like to have to get up every day at five o'clock in the morning and go swim on a Saturday for four hours and work for it for, you know, 11 years of your life. Yeah. And then have that, have that opportunity taken away from you by a man because you've never experienced that, you know? And I saw a cyclist that was on Tucker last night. Same thing. And she was talking about how, you know, it's like, I have to watch my diet. I, I, I mean, I, I have to do every, I work every single day at the sport and then some man just strolls in and takes it away. That's and it's happens. so funny. And it's so funny how the men are the ones who are fighting for us now. What is that? Yeah. Well, at the top of the Daily Mail right now, you guys, this is what's happening in Canada. There is a male power lifter who in protest of Canada's, their law that says, well, all you have to do is identify as a woman to compete in women's sports. You don't need to prove your any kind of anything. You just can say it. So in defense of women, he is ridiculing these laws, it says, and he has declared himself a woman. He has entered a female contest and smashed every bench press record held by a trans woman. So a trans woman has already broken all the records for, in this women's category. So this power lefter is like, screw that. I'm going to show everybody how stupid this is, how unfair it is. And I'm going to I'm going to say for a moment that I'm a woman and I'm going to topple these yeah, records. It's just dumb. Joe and it's all we can do is ridicule and mock it until right. it just becomes so absurd and recognized as absurd by everyone. Right. That maybe we'll stop all this nonsense. Yeah, it is. It's it's absolute nonsense. And Joe Rogan is 150 percent correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. I love when he drops off bombs. I can't. I help do, it. too. I do, I too. It. Mm -hmm. Here he is uh, talking about kind of the state of the media and they're they're ignoring uh, how just incompetent Biden is. One of the greatest examples that's happening right now is this massive protest in France, massive protest in France, nine million people on the street, literally. Up this is about arms. the social security change. Yes. Yeah. M Macron in France yeah. takes his fucking eighty thousand dollar watch off under the table while he's talking to people about tightening up and about how, you know, about <laughs> how you know, th this has to be done. Like it's, he, the guy's wearing a fucking, uh, we'll find out what watch he was wearing. Cause you don't watch it, <laughs> you don't like this. But the fact that this dork thought it was a good move to take his fucking watch off under the table. And then there's the, the protests in Israel, enormous protests in Israel, mm -hmm. millions of people on the streets. Yeah. And you're not hearing a fucking peep about it. Right. You know, all it is is like January 6th, January 6th. Did you see what they did? January 6th, Trump is coming back, but January 6th looms large. How about the fact that the guy who's the president right now can't form a fucking sentence? <laughs> he makes up words and stumbles through things. And no one says a goddamn thing about it. Mm -hmm. You know what? And try taking our guns away. See what happens. Oh, yeah. It's at what is it? F A F O? Mm. Uh huh. F A F O. F A F O, y'all. <laughs> F A F O. I mean, seriously, talk about 
you know, what people will do. I just, listen, I'm not saying that there's going to be like violence if that happens, but, but there will be, people will be mad. Oh yeah. There's <laughs> going to be will, anger. There's, there's going to be some be anger. Some, there's going to be some anger. If you, if you, uh, if you say to people, listen, we're going to take all your guns away in a, in a United States of America, where in the constitution, it says you have the second amendment and we are completely different than any other country on yep. the planet. We are the, the, the most wonderful experiment of a, of a country in the world in, in the, on the planet. I mean, it's FAFO. <laughs> Um, well, and speaking of the tippy top of this administration, Kamala, who we've mentioned earlier in the week, is off happily dancing and singing and laughing her way through Africa. She's such an embarrassment. So I've got another clip to share with you of her using that really condescending tone um, as if I, I don't know how to describe it. It's not the kindergarten voice. It's it's well, it kind of is. It's like the kindergarten voice fused with this voice where she wants to overpronunciate everything. I, and I don't exactly know why. Um, and so she, and sh the word salad that you're about to hear is also extraordinary. So it's like peak Kamala all in this one tiny clip. And then right after that, you'll see Joe Biden, what Joe Biden looked like yesterday as reporters were shouting questions at him, hoping to get answers about a whole lot of issues. And that weird sort of nursing home dementia smile that he has <laughs> where he just stares at them. Yeah. It's just like with a weird, like that cat grin and yes. just like really psycho. Yeah. You're just like, what oh, is stop that? It. Stop it. Yeah. So something about these two clips back to back, just it's, it's jarring when you recognize that that is the tippy top of leadership yeah. in our country. The two people. Yeah. Hang on to your hats. Here it comes. The creative work that is happening on this continent, as represented by the work that is happening here in God, is extraordinary in terms of the international global impact. Now, this is not a new phenomenon, but it is something with that with all of the current excitement about the evolution of culture and music and artistry. That is very significant. What is happening here is changing the way people kind of enjoy themselves. <laughs> <laughs> this goes on for a full minute. I can't, I can't show anymore. It's too, it's, it hurts too much. <laughs> he's cre He's so creepy. That voice of hers. What was that? She just, right? is, God, it's like, she's a different, it's like, she's a completely different person than when she was, um, Senator, you know? Oh my I mean? God. Completely. I different. mean, it's, it's like, she was playing a role as Senator. Like she was in drama class or something. Cause remember she was like this, she tried to make herself like this giant badass as Senator. But I bought it. I totally bought it during the Kavanaugh trial. She was I was mean. like, wow, she's effective. She's you really know? mean. I didn't think she was, I didn't know if she was effective because I don't think any Democrat is effective. I don't really think a lot of our politicians, period. I don't even know if many of the Republicans are effective. I just think, I just think that she was mean. You know, she was just, I, I oh, remember thinking, mean. I was like, God, I don't want to cross her. She's like, she spits fire, man. Like she's mean. But now she's just, she doesn't seem mean at all. She just seems a nap. She's like a and, child. Right. It's, it's like she weird. It's like they, they said, Hey, you're going to run for a vice president. Let's give you a lobotomy. <laughs> and maybe they okay. did. Maybe. I don't know what don't, happened. I'm not sure. It's a really strange transformation. What happened there? Bizarre. Absolutely mm -hmm. bizarre. Um, speaking of bizarre, there was this moment where let's see, Sonny Hostin on the view Try, she was talking about, um, I, I, maybe they were talking about reparations. I can't remember the context exactly, but she is basically making this unreal comparison between worrying about her black sons uh, and comparing what they go through with what the Uyghurs are going through in China. Oh my God. It is extraordinary. So she even says something like, well, you know, my six foot two son who's in college 
who's obviously a privileged person in college, she's trying to compare his plight as a black American to the genocide of Uyghur Muslims in China. Oh and it's so extraordinary oh, it's like that Sandra Smith and John, somebody, I can't remember his name, John, whoever hosts with Sandra Smith. I don't know his name either, but I, yeah, it's her partner. They, their reaction to this, you guys, is oh like, what is even happening? And so I thought the reaction was worth playing the clip because it's, it's just, you're, you have to see it to believe it. Here we go. Social justice reform became the hot topic on The View when the host discussed a poll showing Americans' patriotism on the decline. Co-host Sonny Hostin blamed the treatment of minorities in the U.S. for that, comparing it to the genocide of Uyghur Muslims in China. Oh, my God. As a woman of color with a six foot two black kid in college and a five foot seven, five foot eight black kid in high school. I don't see that part of American exceptionalism. I'm sorry. I think this country has a lot of problems that could be solved. Yes, maybe they're putting uh, Muslims in jail in Afghanistan, I think you mentioned, and China. And China they're putting a lot of black, oh my black God. people in jail here. Can- mm. In Afghanistan was her first. She doesn't even know. Okay. Uh, I mean, speechless. You know, everybody's got a personal experience in this country, and you can't pretend to walk a mile in their shoes. But the, the genocide of Uyghur Muslims in China yeah. is 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 an is an issue <laughs> that has drawn world condemnation. And uh, I don't think I'll go much further than that. I really, I want I want him uh, to say you're a dumbass. I want I want that that sweet man with the gray hair that John, John Roberts. L- Thank you, John Roberts. I love him because he's just so stoic and like normal. And he's like one of the last newscasting kind of dudes out there. You know, he has like that newscastery voice and delivery. There's not a lot of them. I would it would have been nice if he said he she is a giant dumbass. I like what he did because he he didn't have to say he just his face said it all. And the very few words he that he stunned. said, was just like, I'm just not even going to go further than that. Stunned. <laughs> How can you not know this is happening in China? My but how, daughter, how do you, even if you did know that, how do you compare your son's existence right. in America to what the Uyghurs are going her through? Son, her son's probably at an Ivy League school. I mean, it's just I mean, unreal. And then did you hear the end where, because I know you were mad, and so I think you were like just commenting. Did you hear the end where she actually said, well, I mean, I know you said the Uyghurs are in Afghanistan or China or whatever, but black people are being imprisoned here too. Black people are being imprisoned here too. So are That's white people. That's what she said. So are white people. I, so, are, so, are Chi- so are Asian people. So are Mexican people. So are like all, everybody's being imprisoned here. Everybody. I just. It's wow. Like, and then what did the height of her kids have to do with literally anything? They're saying there's everybody saying that her kid goes to Harvard. Her, her kid goes to Harvard. Yeah. Cambridge is a really listen. I went to Harvard, you guys, in, in 93. I went to Harvard. And I'll tell you, Cambridge is just a really awful place. <laughs> Cambridge is really awful. By the way, my uh, apartment there in 1993 cost almost a thousand dollars a month and it didn't have a kitchen. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll tell you, it's. It's just a terrible place to live. But yeah. seriously, what was the height thing about? I don't know why she was saying he's six five and five. Six, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why she had a point. Like that I don't out. understand how that had anything to do with American exceptionalism it had nothing or patriotism to do with or Uyghurs or anything she was saying Zero. whatsoever. Zero to do with it. I don't know what that had to do with anything. Oh my god! All right, last thing before we get to whack, um, and that is that that Kate Spade a brand that we have both been fans of for a very I long like, time. I have a, I have a Kate Spade purse Same. in the other room. I have a couple and I <sighs> loved her. I lo- I've, I've got clothes that are Kate Spade. I, I mean, I love that brand and I, I have to stop buying Kate Spade because Kate Spade's brand has decided that the best person to show off their clothes um, who doesn't even possess a normal female body, Dylan Mulvaney. I they see. have hired Dylan Mulvaney to promote women's clothing to women so that Dylan Mulvaney can represent how women's clothes should fit women. Explain that crazy to me. Here is Dylan showing you all the stuff. 
Started with the first day of spring. I am at Kate Spade, New York to find the perfect spring outfit. Let's go. Kate Spade, New York is a staple in my wardrobe. And I think I absolutely need to have this as my spring bag. The mini bags are in, they're in, let's go. You know I love pink and I think the bag will go great with this. Let's try her on. You can always use another pair of heels, right? Here's the full fit check. I love a puffy sleeve and I added some jewelry because more is always more. And honestly, I think I'm gonna wear this out of the store. So happy spring. I love ya. I, I can't, I can never shop there again. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm done. Do I'm done with Kate Spade too. No more, no more Kate Spade. So I'm just, I'm so awesome. tired of this. I'm so tired of this crap. I'm just so tired of it. Like enough already, you know, enough. Yeah. That's a dude. Right. And, and what, what happened? Planet, do, does he need to tell me about uh, women's right. clothing? And, and honestly, what happened there was they took an opportunity away from a woman. So yeah. congratulations, Kate Spade. Also, Kate Spade is, is no longer with us. Right. And I don't I know actually, how she would actually feel, but I suspect that she'd be all about it. Yeah, I, I think her, she'd be all about Dylan Mulvaney. With giant, ugly glasses, she'd probably be all about it. Yeah. Right. She would be all about this. Mm -hmm. All right, it is time for some whack, and we have double whack today. Okay, you guys. so first I need to um, remind everybody about our American Business Spotlight. I know this a is lot so of cool. you. I've actually gotten text messages from people. People are like that; they're all excited about this. Our American Business Spotlight, which is like an advertising showcase for small businesses that want to have a four-week ad opportunity with us, um, that they may not have done so otherwise. Okay, so this is a way to just reach our target audience, and we offer a very unique opportunity to do that because we have a really close knit group here of people. We have a highly engaged audience, and um, this will give you some exposure. So it's four week ad opportunities. Check it out. And where where do they? Um, who do you they can send an email to chicks at radioamerica.com. Yes. If you have a small business and you're interested in potentially getting on board this four week uh, opportunity for advertising on our show. It's so yeah. cool. Yeah. And we, cause we are all about the small American small businesses. So definitely try to check that out. And then also check out our website at chicks on the right .com. I have two wax today. Cause it's what do you special. Want first? Special long show. I think we should talk about the Beeson first. Okay, the let's open that. This, this is a weird thing that's happening. It's called Beeson. 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 <laughs> it's the latest people, challenge, you guys. People latest are taking TikTok challenge. <laughs> of course, it's a TikTok challenge because this is a gen. I'm doing two things about this generation that I think is really weird. This generation are they're they're smearing Burt's Bees like lip balm on their eyeballs, and they say it gives them a high. <sighs> guys <laughs> what the hell what it's beezing it's beezing wait well, we have to show you what actually happens though how this is what happens <laughs> okay well you know what you get what you get of course you do f-a-f-o right <laughs> f-a-f-o is right don't put why don't why do i even have to say this out loud don't put <laughs> lip balm on your eyeballs you idiots <laughs> God, is that wrong? Kids. Is that frowned when upon? When it's <laughs> on the packaging, lip balm, it says right. lip. You don't shove it in your eyeballs. Oh my I God. I have to say, yeah, somebody said they ran out of Tide Pods. That's right. They ran out of Tide Pods. Exactly. That's where these people are <laughs> freaking morons. Okay, so that's happening. That's whack. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. That's right, Emily. For real. Okay. And then the second thing is, um, and this has to do with this generation, um, Jennifer Aniston, she's always been in the news. It's gorgeous, still gorgeous. She's like our age, right? And she still 54. looks- I think she's, she's a little older. She's older than us. She still looks amazing. Um, she was interviewed and she was talking about how this generation finds Friends, the show Friends, offensive. This Ridiculous. whole generation finds it offensive. I don't understand that. What is offensive about Friends? I find that to be whack because I don't get it. I don't get well, it. Well, there's. I don't think. I don't think it's the whole show. I think it's specific episodes where they have comedy that relates to things that you're not allowed to say today. And also, and, so, and also because they're all white, right? And because there's a lack of diversity on the show. Okay. Um, you know, I, I that show was on when I, right after I got out of college. And so it was a pretty, 
I mean, that was like a, a crucial show for me, like in my right out of college days, I watched it religiously and it was oh, sort of every like that episode, every episode. It was like a must see TV lineup on Thursday nights. Wasn't it Thursday nights? Mm -hmm. Yep. And that was like when Seinfeld, all that stuff, like all that, that time, that's when TV was great. God, it was so good. It was really great. And now TV just sucks. Everything sucks on television. Right. I mean, the only thing I watch every once in a while would be like Yellowstone. But I mean, everything sucks now that I, I don't understand the, the whole everything is offensive thing. Everything is offensive to this generation because they are perpetually offended by everything and they just need to shut up. This this whole generation is they are just a bunch of wusses and they're offended because they just love to be offended and they're hooked on offensiveness. And I'm offended by them. <laughs> Well, the problem too, and I was really hoping when I saw this article, I was like, okay, I get it. I get that she's saying, because I, I believe it. I absolutely, we see this all the time that people are perpetually offended and they get offended about really dumb stuff. I was hoping at some point in the article that she would actually say, this is preposterous. There was nothing offensive about our show. But instead, it kind of sounded like she was like, yeah, well, times are changed now and we can't say those things anymore. And that's OK. Well, that's Everybody in Hollywood should be fighting back against this. They all need to go Dave Chappelle on all of this nonsense. But and they, they don't. don't. It's like Molly Ringwald in 16 Candles. Yeah. She did the same exact thing where she was like, oh, my God, I'm just I'm so embarrassed by 16 Candles and I'm embarrassed by Pretty in Pink because my daughter watches it. and I'm just so embarrassed. It's like, really? That's what made you. That's the cash, reason that you, you cash the check. Yeah, you cash it. Then give all that money back, you hag. Because yep. that's the reason that you are anything now is because of John Hughes and his brilliance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you should be thanking him for all of those movies. Because they were awesome. Every I, I wish John Hughes would come back from the dead and make a gajillion more movies because they were all amazing. Don't y'all remember God, those? those 80s Uncle movies, Buck. Man. Uncle oh. Buck. Oh, my God. So good. So great. So, so good. Mm -hmm. All right. It is time for some My Pillow Talks. I don't have very many because today I am going to play you that um, Robbie Williams story. <laughs> this is a true story that happened to him. <laughs> and I just love it. Um, but just a, also a reminder that you can still get your slippers uh, and moccasins from MyPillow.com slash chicks, the ones with the squeezy fur kitten technology that feels so good around your feet. 85% off at MyPillow.com slash chicks. chicks. Um, but I do have a couple things to get to before, Robbie. For example, <laughs> Chris Biggs is back with a whole new series of reasons he threw his back out. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's so great. This is so relatable to so many people I know, including my own husband. Check it out. Hello. Uh, this is a new list. These are uh, reasons I've thrown my back out. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. I'm just another old man complaining about a sore back. But uh, my back has been built out of dry red sticks since I was uh, around 30 years old. <laughs> you can just kick rocks with that attitude. Uh, let's jump right in. Uh, number one, washing raspberries. Uh, this is the first time my back ever went out i uh had the audacity to uh, rinse some fruit in the sink you don't want to do that the floor you in, don't want to uh, do that back spasms i had mm -hmm. to be taken to the hospital which you know only proves one thing that fruit is stupid but the <laughs> second reason is Just i uh, i look too fast don't uh, this do that has happened a few times it doesn't really matter which direction i look in um <laughs> if it's too fast if it's not at the speed of a senior sloth my back will seize up <laughs> and i will drop to the floor and have to pee into an empty iced tea jug <laughs> for a few days and the final reason i uh, i kicked a 45 yard field goal it doesn't really matter why this happened uh it just matters that it did and it was accomplished in great glory i got home okay but then once um i got home my back again went into spasms and mm -hmm. i collapsed on my bedroom floor and right. couldn't even get into my bed which required again um some paramedics to be called however they sent two 90 pound women uh, who couldn't lift me off the ground and the stretcher couldn't get up the narrow stairs of my townhouse at the time so uh, firemen were called and they brought in a tarp and carried me out of my house like a beluga when I you know, transferred from one tank to another. Um, it was my greatest day. That's awesome. I love that so much. The ra just don't wash raspberries, you guys. And they, don't that look can, fast. Don't. Never, just ever, ever be look careful. fast. Be careful. Be careful out there today, okay? <laughs>
One big <laughs> fart. Carly, Carly Kat said one big fart will throw her back out. Or one big sneeze. One says, big sneeze somebody, or fart. I mean, you guys Kim, be careful. Kim said one big sneeze. <laughs> Everybody be careful out there. <laughs> it is true though. I mean, my poor husband who has the, like some of the slip discs <laughs> issues he's had, it's the most random, weird, normal stuff that will set it off. You know right. what I mean? You just never know what's mm -hmm. going to set it off. Life it's is so an awful. adventure. <laughs> Big adventure, you guys. <laughs> um, okay, this is one of these. Like, remember when I used to tell jokes on our radio show? Yes. This is one of the. This is this reminded me of that kind of joke. Yeah. Hi. Um, I was just walking through the woods, um, and I found a suitcase in the bush, and inside it is a fox and four cubs. Oh, that's terrible. Are they moving? Uh, I don't know, to be honest, but that would explain the suitcase. You are just so weird. <laughs> Where are they moving to? Oh my God. Anyway, I love that. Um, okay, so it's time for Robbie. All right. So now, for those of you who don't know or are new to the show, Robbie Williams, who's a very, very popular pop artist everywhere but America. He tried to make me love him, you guys. Like, I literally, tried. the second day that I knew Mock, the second day, <laughs> like, we became best friends the first day that we met each other. And then on day two, she was like, okay, now you got to love Robbie Williams. And I was like, listen, I don't think you understand. I'm more of a Led Zeppelin girl. I don't think you get it. And so she sent me all the CDs and crap. And then I was like, okay, we can be friends, but I'm not going to love this guy. All right. <laughs> It's, it's just, I don't think, you, so she tried, but I, I, in fact, do not, I'm not hot for him. this guy. I don't love him. It's not going to oh happen. God. I don't like his music at all, but she's obsessed. So I'm obsessed. You, and I have been for 20 plus years. I yeah. mean, like for, it's been a long time thing. And so I am crazy about him. I, he, there are two biographies about him, both of which I've read. One of which in, he told this story that he's about to tell on the Graham Norton show. It's interesting because he's on the couch with other guests. Justin Timberlake is there. Um, what's that chick from um, all of the, oh, what's that lip sync um, movie that everybody loves so much? The, um, a pitch Perfect? Yes, Pitch Perfect. What's her name? Kendrick. Anna Kendrick. Ken Anna Kendrick, yeah. So Anna Kendrick is also on the show with him. And Robbie Williams, who, by the way, has been married for well over a decade now. He's got four kids. He, But he had a very wild 20s. Like, he was insanely wild, super into drugs, super into horrors, like all the things, right? He was like a huge playboy in the 20s. And so he's telling a story. <laughs> And it is one of my favorite stories, not just because of the story itself, but because of the way he tells it. So if you haven't ever seen Robbie Williams, you're about to. It's a fantastic <laughs> story. Enjoy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, British TV is really weird, you guys. Oh, my it's God. really freaking weird. It is. <laughs> That's a great story. It's a, it's a great story. It's a fantastic mm. story. And I completely believe every word of it because that yeah. is exactly how he was back in the day. <laughs> These are the kind of people that Mock loves. I love him. I love she him so him. much. She loves him so, so much. much. Mm -hmm. Anyway, those are your talks for today. Yeah, those are great talks. See? Gosh, I'm we went over an hour and a half today, you guys. That's right, because remember, no live stream tomorrow. There will be a deep dive that's released, uh, and no live stream Monday, but there will be a new Chicks Cha Ching segment released on Sunday. Right. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week, we will be on at 8.15 Eastern instead of 7.15. He will not get up. He better is so come dead to the world. You better come here. You better come here. Come here. We got to have a pre he's, gra he's growling at me. He does love growling. <gasps> she oh she better. Oh. Yeah, there you go. You hear him growl? You hear him growl? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> there it was. Okay. Ah! I knew it. I knew he was going to do it. If I just, he was sleeping so sound. He was on the floor. He's like, oh, I'm so tired. I don't oh want to. Oh my gosh. You. That was an extra good flap. Extra then. good flappiness. Mwah. Okay. Everybody bring it in. Oh, a double flap. Oh, double flap. Double flap for you guys. Double flap. So you got one for tomorrow too. Everybody we will miss you tomorrow. Make sure you watch all the things and then look out for us on insiders and locals um, next week. And then we will see you on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, later time. And you guys have a wonderful weekend.